So what is going on everyone? Fernando Silva here with another video and happy iPadOS 15 day. Apple should have announced iPadOS 15 by now and then hopefully and ideally either after the keynote or the very next morning we'll be able to get over the air updates for iPadOS and iOS 15. And if you guys haven't seen my iPadOS full walkthrough video, it's gonna be the first link in the description below. It gives you guys every new feature and everything that you need to know about iPadOS 15. So after this video, definitely go check that video out because like I said, it goes through every single feature and lets you guys know how to use iPadOS 15 and get the most out of your iPad with the new software. But in this video, what I wanted to talk about was actually iPadOS 15 battery life because I've been on the iPadOS 15 beta program since it released. I believe back in WWDC, so around the June timeframe. And I know that those betas are supposed to be softwares that need improvement over time, and that's why it's called a beta program for people to go in and test out how iPadOS 15 is working and to give feedback on any bugs and issues. But I did wanna talk about the battery life of iPadOS 15 because Apple, especially on the new M1 iPad Pros, Apple is claiming about 10 hours of battery life on an iPad Pro. And lo and behold, I've gotten nowhere near that 10 hour battery life. But I'm gonna walk you guys through my battery situation, go through my 10 day average, give you guys some new features that were added to iPadOS 15 on the battery side, and kind of go from there and then give you guys my recommendations as to how to make sure you get the most out of your iPadOS 15 battery. But let's get into it. So grab my iPad right here. We're gonna put the screen right here on the left-hand side and we're gonna just walk through iPadOS and the battery life itself. Like I said, I already have an iPadOS 15 video kind of going through all the features. Link it down in the below. And you can see we got uh, our crypto and our stocks are working pretty well. So if you guys wanna check that out, that's public.com, little plug right there. But if we go into our settings, let's check that we are on iPadOS 15. Let's go to the about section. You can see that we are on 15.0. So that is iPadOS 15. And the one feature that actually was a very welcome feature that Apple brought to iPadOS 15, again, it was a feature that has been around on iOS for a very, very long time. And for some reason, they just never brought it up until now. And that is the ability to go low power mode. So low power mode on iOS 15, it kicks in at around 20% battery, but on the iPad, it kicks in at 10% battery. So if you're at 10%, you can go into low power mode and low power mode temporarily reduces background activity, like downloads, mail fetch, until you can fully charge your iPad. So I have noticed that if you go into low power mode, you do get way more out of your iPad, but keep that in mind, you don't wanna be in low power mode the entire time because the screen dims down very quickly. It's not really usable. Like after 30 seconds, if you don't touch your iPad, then it goes dark. I'm not a big fan of low power mode unless I absolutely need it. And now like I mentioned, Apple does advertise eight to 10 hours of battery life on the new M1 iPad Pro. On the 2018 iPad Pro that I had, you know, it was also advertised at 10 hours. By the time I was done with it, about two and a half years later, I wasn't getting that much battery life out of it. So with, so with this situation, I like to go into my last 10 days. So we click on here and then you get to see a nice little graph of what's going on, how I'm using my battery, what my screen on time is, all that good stuff. So on average, we're getting about two and a half hours of screen on time, but that's not a great indicator as to how long my battery is lasting because that's an average. So some days I don't use my iPad at all, like on the weekends, but during the week I do use it a lot. And you can see that it does peak out during the week versus on the weekends, not a lot of use on the iPad Pro. The way you can actually check your battery and see how well it's doing is click on one of those days that have a big bar. So you can go see battery usage. We'll click on this day, which was a Friday. You can see that I got six hours and eight minutes of screen on time, 48 minutes of screen off time. But if you analyze this a little bit more, you can see that the actual battery usage bar graph is showing that I used about 125% battery. That means at some point I did charge my device while I was working on it. So that is what gave me that six hours of battery life because here we got the six hours and eight minutes of battery life with 125% battery, which in my opinion is not good. But now what I like to tell people how to actually check on your battery and what apps are using the most amount of battery, you scroll down here. So here it breaks it down by battery usage by app on the day that you select it, right? So if you go on here, it does it for Tuesday. If you go on here, it does it for Friday. So for this day, for instance, you can see that LumaFusion took up about 49% of my battery usage. And if you tap on the 49, it'll tell you how long you were on there. So two and a half hours of using LumaFusion took up half of my battery. So that to me tells me that if I was to purely use LumaFusion and only edit videos, I could maybe squeeze out five hours and I don't even think I could get five hours out of the iPad Pro, especially when connected to the Magic Keyboard, but that's a whole nother story. And then you can see that YouTube, about an hour and a half of screen on time and usage, only 20% battery. So here you can see a big difference that Two and a half hours of usage takes up 50% versus an hour and a half of usage with YouTube only takes up 20%. So 
So you can see that with 20% battery, an hour and a half of YouTube, if I was only watching and listening to YouTube, I could get about seven and a half, maybe eight hours. But again, that's all estimates based on how much battery was used. Then you can see Twitter, 9%, that's 33 minutes. Safari only took up 6% at about half an hour of usage. So it really depends on the applications that you're using and how well they're optimized for iPadOS 15, how well they're optimized for the Apple ecosystem. So for the most part, native applications, if you are in the native application world, you use Safari for everything, you're gonna get a good amount of battery life in my opinion. I haven't actually tested it out. I could probably squeeze out that eight to 10 hours of battery life if I'm just using the iPad and on Safari. But the moment you use something like LumaFusion or Affinity Photo, anything like that, then it gets a little bit wonky. So let's check on another day. If we go to this Tuesday, which is another big day, here you can see we almost got six hours of screen on time, but we use less than 75% battery. So that's a very big difference to here where we used 125% battery and only got an additional 15 minutes of screen on time. So here I like to see what I used everything for and how it was different. So YouTube took up 34%, which there was about an hour and a half, right? LumaFusion, hour and 10 minutes, 28%. You can see RD client, 42 minutes. So that was a good one. So the remote desktop client doesn't use up like any battery whatsoever. You know, Affinity Photo, 11 minutes, took up about 4%. So Affinity Photo is one of those applications like LumaFusion that's gonna take up a lot of battery as time goes on. Just because you're rendering a lot, you're making changes in real time. And then when you export things, that takes up a lot of battery as well. Because again, you're using all those GPU cores, you're using the M1 chip intensively. So again, the battery life has been very hit or miss with this iPad Pro. So this is where I kind of tell people to go in and really analyze what applications are using the most battery to be able to get closer to that 10 hour mark that Apple, you know, they promise with the iPad Pros. So now that we know how to analyze our iPad OS battery and try to get the most out of it, I do want to give a couple of recommendations as to how to make sure that you're not draining a ton of battery. So in my opinion, one of the biggest battery drainers is actually this magic keyboard. I always keep my iPad on the magic keyboard at all times. It's very, very rare that I take it off. There's only one real instance where I take it off and actively use it, and that's when I'm using Affinity Photo because I would rather be you know, on a plain field, on a level field when actually making changes with my Apple Pencil. So that is the only time I really take it off. But in my opinion, the Magic Keyboard is a big, a big time battery drainer on the iPad Pro. Apple does say to give that 10 hour battery life, like that is in the perfect situation, perfect conditions. And in a perfect condition, the iPad is still a tablet, right? So. So you're using it without a magic keyboard, you're using it in your hand, you're using it as a tablet, and that's how you're supposed to get those 10 hours. Because, because the moment you put your iPad on the magic keyboard itself, the battery starts draining way faster. And I don't really know why it does that, because it shouldn't take that much power and that much energy to power a little keyboard like this, especially when like the backlights are never ever turned on, like they're only turned on at night with the ambient sensors and things like that. So at this time, it's only just reading the input of the keyboard that I put in and the trackpad. And even then, after about 10 seconds of it being idle, the trackpad kind of goes away until you touch it again. So it's very, very strange how the Magic Keyboard drains the battery life of the iPad Pro so much. It could just be me, so leave a comment down below if you guys are experiencing the same thing, if you guys have Magic Keyboards and iPad Pros, or maybe even an iPad Air 4, and see how that affects your battery life. I'm gonna have a full comparison. I'm gonna go a whole day without using the Magic Keyboard and then a whole day with only using the Magic Keyboard and kind of see what that battery percentage change is like because again, the Magic Keyboard is a big, big proponent of battery drainage on these iPad Pros. But it's an accessory that I feel is needed, especially for my personal workflow. So it's needed for me, it's not needed for everybody, it's a great accessory and I do recommend it if you are using your iPad Pro for more than just leisure activities because that really kind of helps your productivity. But again, it does drain the battery a ton. And the last thing I do wanna do is actually debunk the myth that if you leave your iPad Pro plugged in or any other device, any other new device for that matter, if you leave them plugged in at all times, it's gonna ruin your battery. It's not the case anymore with smart charging, trickle charging, like the low power mode charging. It's all, basically once your iPad or your iDevice gets to 80%, it knows to kind of lower the speed and save your battery longevity over time. So you don't have to worry about it being plugged in at all times. The only thing that you should know with the iPad Pro specifically is that if you want to charge it faster, you should plug it in directly into the actual USB-C slash Thunderbolt port because that gives you up to 33 watts of pass-through power as opposed to if you plug it into the Magic Keyboard directly, I believe you only get about 14 or 15 watts of pass-through power 
to actually get it charged. So it does charge much, much faster if you plug directly into the iPad Pro. But that is my two cents. Hopefully you guys enjoyed and learned something new about the battery life. And if you guys are enjoying iPad OS 15, leave a comment down below what your favorite feature is because I know that a lot of iPads are gonna be able to update to iPad OS 15, going down to the iPad Air 2, the first gen 9.7 inch iPad Pro. So it's amazing how Apple's supporting all these devices seven years later with brand new software to make sure that the users, the consumers like us, we feel like we get brand new devices even though it is a five to seven year old, you know, computer piece of hardware. But that's pretty much gonna do it for this video. So hopefully you guys enjoyed. Leave one more comment down below to let me know what your favorite part of Apple's keynote was. Always curious to know your guys' opinion. But until next time, peace.